All right. Are we ready to get started? Yes, let's go. Yeah. All, right. go. All right. Hello and welcome to Virtual Buccaneer Day. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Katie Peterson and I will be today's moderator. If you have any questions to ask, please submit them in the comments on Facebook or live chat on YouTube. We will answer them as they come in. Before we get started, take a second to claim your free DCC t-shirt. All you have to do is click the link in the comments on Facebook or video description on YouTube and submit your name and contact information. We will send you a brand new DCC t-shirt just for tuning in. All right, I'd like to get started by introducing our virtual Buccaneer Day panel. Uh, Julie, would you like to kick us off? Tell us a little bit about yourself. My name is Julie and I'm the admissions specialist. All right, let's go to Sarah. Hi everyone, I am Sarah Northwolf and I'm the Associate Director of Academic Advising and Dual Enrollment here at Dawson Community College. Good to have you here. Thanks, Sarah. All right, over to Justin. Yeah, hello, my name is Justin Beach. I'm the Director of Financial Aid uh, here at Dawson Community College. And again, I'm glad everybody's joining us. Thanks, Justin. And last but not least, McKenna. Hi, everyone. My name is McKenna Fleming. I am the Assistant Director of Recruitment at DCC. So I travel all across Montana and surrounding states to talk to prospective students just like yourself. So thank you for joining us today. Great. Thanks, McKenna. All right, let's get started with some questions. The first question I have is for Sarah. So I'm not sure what to major in. What if I choose a major and end up wanting to change it? Is that possible? Hey, yes, that is a really good question. Um, partly because if you have that question, you're definitely not alone in asking it. Um, quite a few students actually end up coming to college not knowing 100% what they want to do or what they want to major in or what they want their degree to be. And so um, studies show that at least or around about a third of students who go to community college end up changing their major at least once before they graduate. So if you start off in a major or a program or a plan of study and you decide that it's not a good fit for you, you'll work with your academic advisor to check out some other options. And together, you and I, or you and that other academic advisor can find a program that's right for you based on your goals and your academics. So uh, one thing to think about is if you do change your degree or you change your degree program, a lot of classes will count toward like a general core class um, or an elective in another degree. So even if you take a class that doesn't necessarily go toward that one degree, it's likely that you'll be able to use it in another part of your degree. And, you know, even if you take a class that doesn't necessarily fit into one of those boxes, you've still got a great learning experience from it. You still learn about yourself as a student and you hopefully learn something cool and new. So um, you, you're learning about the world around you and um, know that you're not alone if you're asking that question. Great, thank you. All right, the next question I have is for Justin. How do I apply for financial aid? Yeah, so that's a that's a great question. Um, so most financial aid uh, starts uh, with the federal application. So the free application for federal student aid or FAFSA. Um, you, knew, you can do it as a new student. You would want to complete a new FAFSA application as a returning student. You'd want to um, do a renewal. Um, and the first step to that is to go ahead and go to fafsa.gov. Um, and it's gonna ask you if you're a new student to create an FSA ID and password. Uh, and this is really important because you're gonna keep this FSA ID and password through your whole college career and after um, if you wanna access your federal aid um, and any information. So it's really important that the step that you uh, use an email address that you're gonna keep uh, with you um, for pretty much your, your whole life. So don't use like a, your high school email address or something like that. Really use an address that you're gonna have with you um, so you can access it. Um, and then as a dependent student, um, you're going to have to fill it out with your parents. So your parents are also going to have to um, apply for that FAFSA ID and password. Um, so they will have to electronically sign the FAFSA application with you. 
to complete the application, you actually log on to FAFSA.gov um, and complete the application. Uh, for this year's uh, FAFSA cycle for the 2021 year, uh, you're going to have to have some information with you. Uh, you're going to be using your uh, 2018 tax information for you and your parents. So be sure and have that uh, information handy when you do that. Uh, our school code, that's another thing when you get to the section where you're going to want to add uh, schools that you want to get your information to, you're going to want to add our school code if you want your information to come to us. Uh, and that's uh, our school code is 002529. Another thing I'd like to say about the FAFSA application, if you haven't applied yet, you still can. You know, it opens in October and then the whole state of Montana has a priority deadline of December 1st. Uh, now, that's just for some state aid that is available, but you can actually still complete the FAFSA application pretty much any time throughout the year and still see if you're eligible for any type of federal aid. So it's important to keep that in mind. It's not too late to go ahead and do that if you haven't yet. Great, awesome, Justin, thank you very much. Um, so let's go back to Sarah for a question. Can you tell me more about your online learning opportunities? Absolutely, and um, I'll just share with y'all that we, um, we have an online specialist, Jordan, who wasn't able to be with us today. So uh, I'm gonna answer Jordan's, or questions that would have typically gone to Jordan and um, hopefully I'm able to, able to answer them as well as she could have, but know that um, she's here as well when uh, when you're going to get to campus. So for our online learning opportunities, we have a wide variety of classes um, and we've got degree programs that are fully online as well. We've got early childhood education, business management, criminal justice, chemical dependency. Um, we also have fully transferable degrees, those associate of arts or associate of science degrees that you can um, complete totally online and then transfer to a four year institution. We've uh, got certificate options online as well. Like I said, we've got that early childhood education. We've got a human resource management certificate that you can complete online. And we've got um, a rural organization employee management, we call it Rome certificate that you can complete online as well. So regardless of if you're looking to transfer to a four year degree or complete a certificate in a semester or a year, we've got tons of options for you. Um, if you're not ready to go fully online, you can do kind of like a hybrid option. So uh, you can take some online classes and some in-person classes, like there might be a class that you're interested in that uh, conflicts in time with another class that you're taking that's required for your degree. And that might be a case where you take that required class online and then you take an in-person or and then you take um, like an elective class or an interest class um, in person or vice versa. So we've got um, elective classes like history and ethics. So keep those in mind when you're looking at the academic schedule and you're working with your academic advisor to choose those classes and know that we're always here for you. We can answer any of those questions if you have any. So don't hesitate to reach out with those. Awesome, Sarah, thank you. Justin, can we go back to financial aid for a second? Uh, how okay. do I add DCC to my FAFSA application? Yeah, so that's a good question. So um, at this point, if you submitted your FAFSA application, you didn't include us as one of the schools that you want to get your application, you're actually gonna want to have to log back into your FAFSA application and go ahead and make a correction. Uh, and so you're going to use that FSA ID and password that we talked about. You're going to log back in uh, to that um, application, click on make a correction. Uh, you're going to go to the section where the school codes are. Uh, that's when you'll go down and you'll put our school code in there. You can either search by name uh, or you can put our school code at 002529. Then you'll hit, hit next uh, on that. And then you want to be sure and go to the sign and submit page. We have a lot of students that they put a, you know, they make a correction and they put a school code on there and then they actually don't go to the end of the application and submit it. Uh, so you, you have to submit the application to make the correction. So you'd go to that sign and submit page, you'd click it, sign it with your electronic signature, and then it should send off uh, and make a correction with uh, the Department of Ed. And then we should receive that updated FAFSA application. Thanks, Justin. I, I have a question from Facebook Live from Paige. 
Do we know when we will be starting the semester yet? Hey Paige, I can answer that. This is Sarah. Um, so for the fall semester, we have the academic schedule set up and um, on-campus classes are gonna start on August 26th. You'll be able to move into your dorm on August 22nd. That's when the residence halls will open. So come to campus on the 22nd and then we'll have a couple of days of orientation, make sure that you're acclimated on campus. And then classes will start in the fall on August 26th. Um, if it's okay, I'm gonna take this opportunity to talk a little bit about like our different sessions that we have. Cause we have our on-campus classes starting in the fall on August 26th, but then we've also got um, within those online classes and on campus classes as well, some uh, different session lengths that you can engage in. So for the fall and spring semesters, the the typical or I guess the, the regular, I guess, if you want to call it session is a 15 week se session. But then we've also got 10 week sessions and six week sessions that you can do as well. Um, those are a little bit accelerated, but if you've got a commitment at the beginning of the semester or at the end of the semester, you can do one of those six week sessions online and get a full class done um, in half the amount of time. You know, knowing that you're still doing the full class, so it's gonna be intense, it's gonna be um, some work, but it's gonna be a great opportunity for you to get that done in a short amount of time. Um, we've also got the summer session, which is a six, we've got a six week term and then we've got a 10 week term in the summer as well. So um, just be aware that we've got all of these different session lengths for you and um, that we're able to kind of accommodate some, some life things that you may have going on as well. But the original question, August 26th is when classes are gonna start in the fall. Great, thank you, Sarah. So I have another question from Delaney. Is there a different date for online student start date? I'm doing all classes online. Sarah, I think you maybe answered that already, but if you have anything else to add. Yeah, that is a good question. Typically the online start date, if you're doing, um, we've got a couple of different versions online. And so your online classes might start a week after those on-campus classes, or if you're doing a 10 week session, they're gonna start a little bit later. Or if you're doing one of the six week sessions, they might start at the same time, but then end a lot earlier. And so it just depends on which classes you're taking and we'll get that academic calendar published soon so that you can know when those classes are gonna start. The other thing is if you're doing those online classes, make sure that you are in contact with Jordan at her online at dawson.edu email because she sends out those, um, those dates of when registration starts, when classes start, and when classes end. So you'll have all of that information. Awesome. So I have a question here for Julie. What are the steps I need to take in order to become a DC stu student? And what documents do I need to provide? Okay, so <clears throat> for applying to DCC, you'll, you want to go online to Dawson.edu and you can either click apply and apply online or you can print out the application and mail it in uh, once you get that in then you'll need to get in your official high school transcript any official college transcripts and your immunizations great julie thank you so I have another question from Tamara on Facebook. Uh, we added DCC and applied. I received something back that said, you need his transcripts with date of graduation. With that up in the air, apparently our administration is having trouble getting that. Any advice? Uh, well, once you graduate, I mean, I know graduation this year is a little different than what it normally would be but you can get in contact with your counselor at the high school and um, you can just ask them to mail it to us once you that graduation date is on there. Thank you. And I have another question from Paige on Facebook. For those playing sports, we will, be, will we be able to get into the dorms earlier for when we come down to bond with our team? That you'll have to get in contact with your coach. 
they'll let you know um, if you need to be there earlier or not. Thank you. Uh, let's let's go um, to McKenna for a question. Does DCC have campus housing and dining services? Uh, hi, so yeah, we do, we have both. Um, that's kind of a common misconception with community colleges um, is that there's no housing on campus and there's no dining services, but um, our housing on campus is actually super awesome. It's really spacious and comfortable. It's not like typical dorm rooms that you see at a lot of universities. Um, they're actually more like apartment style housing. So they have a kitchen and they have a living room and you have a bathroom to share a few, with a few people uh, rather than sharing a bathroom with your whole floor, um, like at a lot of colleges. But yeah, lots of space. Um, it's really nice. Our current students really adore the housing. It's nice to have a good place to go back to when you're not in class or practice. Um, so yeah, we really, we're proud of our housing. Um, then as far as our dining services, we do offer that on campus too. Um, each student gets a meal plan and there's two different meal plans that students will choose from uh, when they apply uh, for housing. You uh, will select it on there. And there's one that is equal equivalent to 10 meals per week. So that's the 10 meal per week option. Um, and that one is $1,305 per semester. And then the other option is the 16 meals per week option. And that one is $1,790 per semester. So it just kind of depends. Uh, we've got a lot of athletes that go with the 16 meals per week option. Um, if you're kind of you know, close to home and you're gonna be going home a lot on the weekends, um, or something like that, and you don't think you'll need those 16 meals, then the 10 meals per week option is definitely um, a good choice. But yeah, we are very proud of our housing and our dining services um, at our college. Great, thank you. Um, so I have another question from Alyssa on Facebook. Uh, when do you start registering for classes and meeting with academic advisors? <laughs> Hi, Alyssa. This is Sarah. Um, I saw your question on Facebook and I was excited to see your name because I have seen you in our like in our rosters and, you know, getting ready for students coming in. So I'm really glad that you were able to join us today. Um, so over the summer, we're going to have a couple of days where students, fingers crossed, can hopefully come on campus and meet with their advisor. Um, if depending on how things go and how things open up, if students aren't able to come to campus to get registered for classes, we'll be setting up um, phone meetings or we can do like a Google Hangout meeting to talk about the classes that are gonna be right for you for the fall. So um, we'll get that set up. And then if for some reason you're busy throughout the summer or maybe these days that we plan, um, you're working those days or you're on vacation or you're doing something, um, students can also get registered during orientation uh, those first couple of days after moving in before classes start. So you've got lots of different opportunities to get yourself set for fall semester. And then um, just to kind of make sure that you have the whole picture, that's what happens for your first fall semester. And then um, you've got access to your academic advisor all throughout your time here. And so we would really want to encourage you to meet a couple of times per semester with that academic advisor and you'll register um, like in October or November for the spring semester classes um, and you'll plan that out with your advisor. We'll set up a, a graduation plan for you. But that's a great question. Thanks for asking, Alyssa. Thank you. So I have another question from Paige on Facebook. Uh, can someone explain how meal plans work? So I'll grab this one, if that's okay, everyone. Um, so yeah, each student gets a meal plan card, uh, almost like a student ID. Um, and I think they also get an auxiliary card. Does that sound right, everybody? I wanna make sure I'm saying this right. But they, they get these cards um, and basically you go into the cafeteria, you, that card is loaded with your meal plan. So like I discussed, there's that 10 meals per week option um, and the 16 meals per week option. So you have that amount of money on your card um, you walk into the cafeteria, you order, and essentially they swipe your card um, and that amount that your lunch is comes off of your meal plan. Um, I think you can also add money on there if you run out, um, but there's definitely a few options there that we can discuss once you get on campus. But um, the basics are you have a card and you'll walk into the cafeteria and swipe that card. Thank you. 
Justin, we've received a few questions about work study. What exactly is work study and does DCC offer work study positions? Yeah, so work study uh, is a federal program uh, that allows students to work um, on campus and there are some in community jobs and earn uh, basically a paycheck. Um, it's federally funded um, and community or, and uh, institutional funded. Um, so you do have to fill out the FAFSA application and uh, you indicate on the FAFSA application if you were interested in work study or not. Um, and then you do have to have uh, some need for uh, this program since it's a need based program. But essentially you mark on the FAFSA application that you're interested in work study. Um, I receive that we try and get a list of work study students at the beginning of the semester and try and have a, a meeting where we kind of talk about what jobs are available on campus, um, you know what you need to do to uh, go and ask for a position, go and interview and talk to those, your supervisors. Uh, and then you'll start working just like a regular job. You'll have hours every week that you're supposed to be there that um, shouldn't conflict, that don't conflict with your um, school schedule. And that's kind of the, the best thing about it is uh, the supervisors really try to work with the students so that they can um, go to their classes and make the classes, but still you know, be able to earn some money um, around campus. Um, and so that's kind of what the work study uh, positions are about. So yeah, we do have those. Thanks, Justin. Uh, McKenna, I know that we've talked a little bit about housing already, but can you explain how you apply for housing and if you can request a roommate? Yeah, absolutely. So I'll just kind of talk through the process and then I'll also let you know how um, requesting a roommate goes. So to apply for housing, you're going to go um, onto our DCC website. Um, you're going to click on the future students tab that's right there on the main um, homepage when it pulls up. Um, then you're going to click on residence life. And at the very bottom of that, um, that page, the residence life page is the housing application link. And once you click that, that'll pull up. Um, you're going to fill out all of your information, everything on there. Um, and then at the end of the application is a section where you can actually request uh, one or more specific roommates. And we do have a lot of people that do that. Um, you know, some sports teams get to know their teammates before they show up. So they request each other. Um, some people that knew each other from high school request each other. So that's definitely an option. Um, just check out that housing application on our website under Residence Life. Great, thank you. So I have another question from Paige on Facebook. I'm vegan. Will it be difficult finding food that I'm comfortable eating in the cafeteria? Hey, I'll, I'll take this one if that's okay. Um, so Paige, that's a great question. And I know that especially at a small school, you might be thinking to yourself, you know, what are the flexibility options for me? I think one of the best things about Dawson Community College is that because we are so small, we're able to um, help students out if they bring something up to us. And so I remember at the beginning of this academic year, there was a student who um, was like, she just wanted something different from the cafeteria. She was like, you know, I really, I'm just used to eating fresh fruit for breakfast, this, that, and the other. And she was able to talk to um, the dining services manager and say, this is what I'm looking for. Can you help me out with that? And the dining services manager was able to help her accommodate that to to help her feel a little bit more at home with that and so even if um this year we might not have had a ton of vegan options it's one of those things where if you bring that up to someone whether it is just whether it's your coach whether it's someone you're comfortable with at dcc if you want to talk to the cafeteria manager about that we'll be able to help you out and help you figure out what's best for you um, like I said, that's one of those really great things about being a small school is that we know you and we want to help you do the best here. And part of that is making sure that you're adequately fed, that you have, you know, food so that you can study in class. And so we'll help you out with that. Great. Question from Riley on YouTube. I am already planning on attending in the fall. How exactly do I submit my immunization record since that is a part of the application process? So for uh, you can either email it to admissions at Dawson.edu or you can uh, mail it in to 300 College Drive, Glendive, Montana 59330.
All right, I have a question from Facebook. Will there be someone to help us figure out our classes so they won't interfere with our sports schedule? Yes, definitely. Um, so your academic advisor will um, talk to you about the classes that you need for your program. And one of the things that we'll do is say, okay, you're an athlete, so your practices are typically going to be from, oh, I don't know, maybe three to six, and then maybe you lift in the morning. So we'll make sure that we find classes around those times for you so that you don't have to have conflicting schedules. The other thing we'll talk about is um, when is competition season for you. So if, um, if you're a baseball player or a softball player and competition is spring season, we'll probably take um, like a heavier load in the fall semester and then maybe a little bit less heavy in the spring so that you can have time to travel, you can have time to focus on your um, on your athletics and we'll make sure that we create a balanced schedule for you so that you're not totally overwhelmed. Great, thanks Sarah. Uh, McKenna, I have another question for you. Are there a lot of activities and things to do on campus? Yes, so outside of competing in or cheering on our athletic teams on campus, um, there's plenty of other things going on uh, for students. Um, our housing director and his RAs um, are just an example. They've always got something going on. Uh, they host campfires on campus. We have fire pits, so they always do that every year when the weather's nice, obviously. Um, they had intramural ping pong this year, which I thought was kind of unique. Um, so they definitely had that. Um, and then everyone's favorite is the boat regatta. Uh, so we actually have the boat regatta every year. Um, at the beginning, it's like the fall semester, first week of classes. Um, and not only do students build boats um, out of cardboard, but also our staff and faculty and administration also take part in that event. Um, yeah, and you basically, you build a boat out of cardboard and we race them and it's super fun. Uh, there's awards given out at the end, uh, such as like best dressed team and the most spectacular sinking award. So it's definitely a fun time had by everybody. It's a good icebreaker um, for athletic teams and dorm room uh, roommates, those kinds of things. But yeah, lots of fun. Um, and then we also have a lot of clubs on campus that I'd like to touch on. Um, we have our criminal justice club. So maybe you're not studying criminal justice, but you can also be a part of that club, which is super cool. A lot of students hear about some of those classes, like the forensics classes um, and things like that, and kind of want to be a part of that, but they have a different major. So that's a really cool club on campus. We have our music and art clubs as well. We have our associated student body, which is like our student government. Um, and they also put on a lot of events and have a lot of things going on on campus as well. Um, and we have Phi Theta Kappa, which is like the honor society for community colleges. Um, but yeah, definitely a lot going on on campus. And once again, that's kind of another common misconception with community colleges is that there's nothing going on and people just go to class and go back to their dorm room. But a um, lot of fun, a lot of activities going on at DCC. Great, hey, thanks McKenna. Um, I have another question from Tamara on Facebook. When slash how will they be assigned an academic advisor? Great question. So you'll be assigned your academic advisor based on the program that you're studying. So you might have a faculty advisor um, or you might have um, me or Jordan, which we're not faculty, but we are academic advisors. Um, and you'll be assigned that advisor pretty soon actually, so that we can see um, what classes are gonna be right for you. Um, your academic advisor will reach out to you this summer to make sure that we get into those classes, but the way that it's done is based on the degree that you're interested in. Thank you. So I have another question from Paige. I received a form helping me complete FAFSA from Dawson. Do I mail it back in after filling it out? Yeah, so I'll take that question, I guess. Um, yeah, Paige, uh, yeah, any type of communication you receive from the financial aid office, it's really important to respond uh, to me as soon as you can. So you probably received a student data form and what that form is, is I, I use that form to try and get a package going, financial aid package going for students. So if you can get that back to me, um, then I can actually get started on, on processing your, your financial aid and seeing what type of aid would be available for you. 
Great, thank you. Justin, let's talk a little bit more about financial aid. What is a FASA or a FSA ID? Yeah, so I talked about that a little bit earlier. So the FSA ID is the unique uh, ID and password that you're going to create for yourself uh, so that you can actually complete the FAFSA application. And, and moving forward, it's not only the FAFSA application, but really any type of federal aid that you have, uh, you're going to use that FSA ID to access that information. So as you go on and you, um, you know, receive either Pell Grants or if you have to take out loans or anything like that to access any type of that balance, um, you know, any of that information, you're going to use that FSA ID and password. So it's important that a student use uh, a, an email address that they're going to have for pretty much the rest of their life. So like I said, don't use your school, your high school email address or um, a junk email address or anything like that. This is, a you know, something that you're really going to want to have access to. Uh, and as well as I also said for dependent students the parents have to set one up as well and uh, that has to be with a parent email address and password as well um, and sometimes what you have is you have a parent that helps us a student or a, their um, child or dependent fill out the FAFSA application and the parent tries and create tries to create the FSA ID for both the parent and the student using the same email address or using their own email address and uh, that'll actually uh, you have to have two unique email addresses to create it so they really have to be separated um, so that's why I tell students this is really a good time to start um, kind of being independent and create your own, you know, password and and your own ID so that you can keep track of it. Um, and then your parent can create their own unique ID and password. And it's a lot uh, easier that way. Um, so that's one thing that I start telling students just this is a time to, to take ownership of your uh, of your FAFSA information. Great. Thanks, Justin. Uh, can we talk a little bit more about that? Uh, how do I accept my accept my terms and conditions? Yeah, so the terms and conditions, it's actually in your My Info section, uh, your secure student portal. So when you're assigned an ID uh, at um, DCC, you actually have access to what we call My Info. And this is where in the future you're going to access your charges, you're going to look at your award letter, you're going to be able to register for classes, all that kind of stuff is going to be done through My Info. And um, that terms and conditions chat tab is actually under the financial aid section of My Info. So you log into your my information, my info, um, and then you will click on financial aid, and then you'll click the award year that you're looking for. So future students, it's going to be the 2021 award year, and then you would click on that, um, and then there'll be some new tabs available. One of them is going to be a terms and conditions, and basically this is just the list of conditions that's allowing you to pay for school and allowing the uh, DCC to use federal aid to help pay for your balance. So you have to click on accept uh, terms and conditions at the bottom of that page. Then your tab next to it will actually be your award letter. And so that will open up and be available for you to view. So now you'd be able to, after you accept your terms and conditions, be able to click on the award letter and then view your aid. Great, thanks, Justin. So I have a question from YouTube from Cedar. Would you suggest sending in our college transcripts after we graduate so our spring classes are on there? Yes, you'll want to wait until after your graduation uh, for those classes to be on there. Thank you. Um, Sarah, I have a question for you. If I'm starting at DCC in the fall, how can I make sure I take the right classes? <laughs> That is a great question. Um, you will be working with your academic advisor really closely to make sure that you're taking the right classes. Um, the right classes differ for each person. It depends on your program of interest or um, the program that you're planning on graduating in. So your best friend, if you guys are not doing the exact same degree, will probably have a different class load than you do. Um, but the way that you're going to figure out what classes are right are um, you can do a little bit of research. We've got all of those programs on our page. So um, if you go to that DCC future students and then you can look at degrees and programs, you can see the classes within each program. But the way that you're going to get registered for those classes and make sure that they're right for you is by working with your academic advisor this summer. Thanks, Sarah. So I have a question from Paige on Facebook. 
Uh, what if we're not sure of what program to take? Paige, I love all of your questions. Um, I really appreciate that you're interacting with us and that you're engaging with us. And I want to make sure that not just Paige, but everybody who is involved in this Facebook Live, we'll make sure that we reach out to you to, um, to give you our contact information so that if you have a question that didn't get answered, that we can reach out to you afterward. Um, but Paige, your question was, what if you're not sure what program you want to take? I love students who aren't sure what program they want to do because you are going to be open to exploring a lot of different things. What we'll do is we'll take a look at what interests you have outside of academia, what goals you have for your life, uh, what you want your future to look like, and then we'll choose some classes that might help you decide what program is going to be best for you. Um, one of the things we talked about early on in this Facebook Live is what if you change your major or what if you change your degree, the program that you end up wanting to do. Um, we talked a little bit about electives and the core classes that you have. Our core classes and the Montana State like University system core classes are designed to make you a well rounded student. So you're going to be taking classes from a lot of different disciplines as we take these core classes you might find a class that really piques your interest. So you might take criminal justice to fulfill your social science requirement and then think, wow, that was really cool. I think I want to take the next criminal justice class. Or you might really enjoy, let's say you're writing one on one class and think, what if I took creative writing? What if what if I just explored that a little bit more? So we will um, in your case and in a lot of students cases kind of use those core requirements to figure out what direction we want to go and what degree we want to pursue. Thank you. And yes, don't forget to submit the form to receive your free DCC t-shirt. Uh, that is how we will get your contact information to, so all these wonderful people can contact you. So just at the top of the comments, there should be a form that you can submit. So that'd be great. And you'll get a free t-shirt. So it's a win-win really. <laughs> um, so I have another question from Facebook. Let's see. So I'll be a transfer student from Sheridan. I'm waiting for this semester to finish so all my grades will be on my transcript. When's it over? When it's over, do I just send everything to Dawson or is there something else I have to do? You'll just want to uh, get those transcripts sent to Dawson once you're um, done with those classes. Great, thank you. And then another uh, comment from Facebook, speaking of the student data form with the scholarship line on the educational resources part, I have applied for scholarships, but I do not know yet if I received any of them. Should I just leave that part blank? Yeah, so if you've applied for scholarships but haven't actually received any yet, you can leave that blank. And then um, what you're gonna wanna do is just report. So if you get like a community scholarship or something from outside, uh, the institution, so 4-H or a school, your your high school or something like that. You'll just want to report that to the financial aid office, you know, once you know about that, so I can add it as a resource onto your um, onto your account so we can be sure and get your uh, financial aid uh, amount accurate. Great, thanks, Justin. I have another question from Riley on YouTube about immunization records. He said they may be in storage and hard to get to. Is there anything else I can do or how would this be handled in this scenario? Uh, it, you can go to your state or your city and um, request those from them. Perfect, thank you. Um, so it looks like that's all the questions that we have right now. If you have any further questions, you can reach out and contact us at any time. Um, I'd like to thank everyone so much for joining us today. And a big thank you to our panel of DCC experts. They did a great job on answering all your questions. Good job, guys. Uh, we have several great videos on all the topics that we discussed today and more on our website. So if you'd visit Dawson.edu and look for virtual visit experience, it's a great place where you can scroll through all the videos and see everything that we have going and it's just a great resource. So thanks again for tuning in. Don't forget to sign up for your free t-shirt and go Bucks. Thank you. Everyone, thanks for joining. Thank you guys. Thank you.
Thank you.